it's been about an hour since I saw the new movie, The Flash. So The Flash is directed by, forgive me, I don't know all the names of the people that are attached to this movie yet, but it was directed by Andy Moshiti, starring Sasha Kale, Ben Affleck, Ezra Miller, Michael Keaton, Michael Shannon, Ron Livingston, Jeremy Irons, and Helen Slater, and is the continuation of the DC Extended Universe for fleshing out the character of The Flash. Now, I wasn't really expecting much going into this movie. I haven't really been a big fan of most of DC's universe movies as of late. I mean, some of them are pretty enjoyable. They are, I guess, pretty well shot, well made, but a lot of them sort of kind of fall flat for me at the same time. I really did like the Snyder Cut of Justice League, and even though the original Justice League movie was okay, the Snyder Cut turned it into more like a masterpiece, and like, it's really saying something where you can watch a four-hour movie and not get bored of it. I mean, it is a really very, very solid film. The only problem I, I have with that movie is that I don't know why it's four by three. I know people like this aspect ratio, but for some reason, might like, just make it 16.9, and I don't think there would really be any difference. Maybe somebody will prove me wrong. But anyway, I wasn't a big fan of the first Wonder Woman movie, and I definitely wasn't a fan of Wonder Woman 1984. I did sort of enjoy Aquaman-ish, and I thought Batman v Superman was good. The extended version was better. And funnily enough, I've never seen Man of Steel. I haven't seen Man of Steel once, so I don't really know that much about that movie. But there are a few returning characters in this movie. For example, General Zod, who is played... Who is he played by again? He's played by uh, Michael Shannon, was very good in this movie. And funnily enough, I, I noticed that Michael Shannon... In another show that I just started watching, where is it? Uh, I just started watching Boardwalk Empire a, uh, a few weeks ago, and he plays like this uh, kind of this sort of religious nut person who like is very full of like religious wrath and is very judgmental of people who are not on his same belief system. And when I haven't seen much of him, but he's pretty scary in that show, and he, I'm pretty it's pretty pretty obvious that. He's probably going to be the villain of the Boardwalk Empire, but I don't know. I haven't even finished the first season yet. But anyway, back to the movie. Yeah, he was pretty good as, good as Zod. Uh, I think that Boardwalk Empire villain is better than General Zod. But anyway, um, I, I don't think this is really much of a spoiler because you see him in the, in, in the poster. Michael Keaton makes a fantastic return as the original 1989 Tim Burton Batman. It will definitely be a nostalgia trip for people who really like that movie. And of course he has the um, the same cowl and he can't move his neck, he always moves like this, which is kind of cool and very comical at the same time. It's silly, but it's very self-aware that of like how more simplified the Batman suit was back in the 80s than when the Dark Knight finally was able to get him to move his head in 2008. And Michael Keaton actually did put on a pretty good performance as this, uh, as this role. He definitely, you, you could see that he was enjoying being able to play as Batman once more. I really did enjoy the time he had in the movie. I thought he was actually a pretty heartwarming warming presence, and I'm happy to see him in a big modern movie because you really don't see that much of him anymore. I know he was the villain in Spider-Man Homecoming, but I'm actually happy to see him in like a non-villain role, which is actually pretty cool. I do like Michael Keaton. Ezra Miller plays um, a very good uh, role as, as The Flash, not very long into the movie. I don't think this is really a spoiler either, but he kind of like meets his alternate self in an alternate universe. And the alternate version of him is a lot more socially awkward. He's a lot more um, naive. He's a lot more gullible and he's a lot more um, sort of raucous in, in his like decisions. I mean, he's not an idiot, he's smart, but you can definitely see a difference between the two versions of of The Flash. So I, I won't spoil in this movie, uh, in, in this review, I'll, I'll save that for the spoiler review. I will just say what I thought about this movie. I, I thought this movie was actually quite brilliant, to be honest. It's definitely the best DCEU movie I've seen since the Snyder Cut of, of Justice League. I, I thought I didn't like Suicide Squad. I thought Suicide Squad was, too, uh, unfortunately, a bit rubbish. I 
did really like um, Batman v Superman the Extended Edition, though the normal version is decent. But this definitely, as a standalone, non-altered DCU film, this stands up, up, up at the top of the pack. It is actually pretty damn good. It's also a, uh, a very fun time travel story that kind of takes the, the concept of time travel a little bit more differently compared to what you've probably seen in the past. There's a lot of... It kind of does feel a bit like um, the DCU version of No Way Home, but it does it in its own way, and sometimes it feels as good as No Way Home, which is definitely refreshing to see from a DC movie. It knows what it is, and it knows what it isn't. It's not really trying that hard to be anything outside of what it is. It is a crossover film at its core. It's not just about The Flash, Michael Keaton as Batman, and also Super Supergirl. It's not a spoiler either because she's in the poster too, but Sasha Cowell as Supergirl really does play off pretty well August, um, of Flash and Michael Keaton Batman. And there is actually some good crossover stuff in here if you are a fan of crossover movies. Overall, without spoiling anything else, I thought this was definitely not a waste of money. It's definitely worth your time to see this movie. It was very enjoyable, very well shot, well written. It was also pretty funny at some, at some parts too. It wasn't incredibly funny, but there were some definitely funny moments in this movie, which is good because you can see that DCU is learning from its mistakes and not take its movies so seriously all the time. I'm so sick and tired of the DCU movies being so too 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 serious, its head stuck up its ass too far and being pretty unfunny, while this movie was more lighthearted and it did have good humour with that, while also balancing some heartfelt moments as well. Overall, I did really enjoy this one and I recommend that you should go see it. I give it a 7.8 out of 10. It is, I still don't think it's as good as Across the Spider-Verse, but it is pretty close in that regard. It's definitely a good effort from DCU, and it's good to see that with this movie that they do know what they're doing now. They're trying to kind of fix the past mistakes, kind of like what The Flash does in this movie, which is kind of ironic. But anyway, that's my opinion of The Flash. A spoiler review will come soon after I have think about the plot details of this movie a little bit more. But overall, that's my opinion. I definitely recommend that you should go see it. It's a fun movie. And also, the two and a half hours flash by. No pun intended. It's a very fast-moving movie, and it has quite a bit to tell, and it's entertaining. Definitely not a flop. Definitely not a stinker. I have to say that Flash is definitely a hit. Definitely see it. Thank you.